Okay. All right. Hi, hello. I'm Luke Munoz, director of the UIL's 1920-21 Young Filmmakers Festival. And I'm here to talk a bit about the contest for the very rare, unusual, extraordinary 1920-21 year. Um, historically, the, the films got started, uh, the film contest got started a, a few years ago. It's really more like eight or nine now. And uh, it still feels like it started yesterday. And uh, we uh, uh, have continued to grow from year to year to year. It, uh, it was really an inspiration that came from watching a film about high school students making movies. And uh, with the changes that have happened with accessibility to equipment, to classes, and, and, and that it is an affordable thing to do. Uh, many years ago, uh, filmmaking was considered a, a rich person's hobby. And it's no longer that. We live in a world where uh, social media allows us to film and tell stories and tell other people's stories and tell your own stories. And we want this contest to be about exactly that. Your ability as teachers, teaching students, to tell stories for us. It's not about, well, I have a red and I have a, this piece of equipment and I have this other piece of equipment. It's about story. How many films have we seen in the last decades where millions and millions of dollars have been invested in a bad script? It doesn't make it a good film. And yet we have seen the simplicity of a story Of that kind of excessive budget. That creates that level playing field for us that we want to happen in our contests in UIL. So if you haven't done this, how do we do it? If you've done this, you know the procedure. The first thing you're going to want to do is create, um, get into the UIL website and find the link to the intent to participate form. Now, let me explain uh, a little bit about this form. You're going to tell us that you intend to create three narratives, three documentaries, three digital animations, and three traditional animations. Yes, that's going to happen for some. The truth is that may not be the case when it comes down to January, when you realize. I have the thing about the intent to participate form. It's not like an obligation that you have, let's say in one act play. In the case of this particular contest, it's merely I intend to do this. This helps us in our planning so that we see that from all the schools, they are intending to enter 3,000 entries. I might expect eight to 900, maybe 700, something along those lines. If we actually got all 3,000, I don't know what we do, but we'll make it happen, okay? So you are not obligated at that point. You will not be receive sanction for not meeting that up, uh, your intent. You merely are helping us prepare to get enough judges, to get enough people to prepare the number of sections, rounds, everything we need logistically to make things happen for your kids. So that being said, the deadline is open. It is there. It is there for you to fill out. Please do that as soon as possible. That on December the 1st, we will open the portal, which will allow you to begin entering films into the system. Uh, the portal will be no different than for what you've done before. Uh, it should be very familiar to you. And for those of you who are new, you will find a link to instructions. Follow them step by step. We've taken time to do that. And if you follow those steps, it's going to get you there. If you're having a problem, it's real simple. Email us. Email us. We'll get back. Sometimes you'd be 
very surprised as to how fast we get back to you with a response. You may get something like, call me, in which case I'm always there to talk to you about whatever you need uh, for this particular contest. So once you open things, they're there, uh, and you need to finalize things, make sure you finalize so that we, uh, the, it, it enters. Then we on our end will be looking at things to make sure they're in the right categories, uh, asking you questions about them. Hey, there's a problem with a, de uh, a time limit on this. We'll try to uh, head off problems before they become uh, real problems versus theoretical problems once that deadline hits. And so speaking of deadlines, the deadline for this particular year will be uh, January 20th. And by a lot of times I get the question, okay, are you talking about noon, like 12 o'clock noon? Are you talking about 12 o'clock midnight? We are talking about one second after 11.59 minutes and 59 seconds p.m. on the 20th of day. You have the day of the 20th to complete things. If there are problems with the system, and sometimes that, that happens, it happens. Uh, uh, we will extend, we will talk to you, you can communicate with us and see what's going on and we will work with it. So, all of a sudden on the 21st of January, we wake up and here are all of the problems that have been entered. What happens then? Immediately, like I said, we, we look at them, we try to figure out if there's any problems, and then we begin to assign to what might be, I guess I've been easiest to, to compare this to like a, a basketball NCAA competition, okay? It's a tournament. It's a tournament that begins with preliminary rounds, followed by another round of eliminations, followed by semifinals, followed by the state. right off the bat is that your films will be randomly assigned to different sections. So let's say you have three films where you hopefully we do things right, okay? You will have a film in three different sections being looked at by three different sets of judges. In the preliminary round, depending on the number of entries, uh, anyone who receives two advancing selections, as in the judge will sit there and say, I advance this one, this is an advancing film, this is a not advancing film. If two of those three judges say you advance, you will advance to the next section. Um, sometimes those sections can include up to 10 to 15 films each other. They are not collaborating with each other. This is all independent. Additionally, they will be preparing notes for you about, uh, about your films, and uh, hopefully those will be nice productive notes that you can use in the classroom <coughs> to improve your filmmaking as, as a whole. Unfortunately, because of the deadlines and time limits and how quickly we have to move this, we don't have time to take those notes, take your film back, rework it, and uh, re-enter it, resubmit it. Uh, the complexities of having to deal with the in links and in uh, uh, the potential for issues with uh, being able to access the films or not do not allow us to do this, and I will say at this time. In the second round, typically that we end up with about half the film. So let's say we started off with 800. Then again, be randomly sectioned and given panels, assigned to panels of judges. And then at that point, they will rank them each first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, to the, the final place of whatever uh, number you have in there. So those numbers are then entered uh, into what is the UIL's tabulation system. 
which will break ties, create the ranks, and produce a ranking sheet that will tell us, hey, this is the first place, the second place, the third place, fourth place, based on the panel's decisions. There is a link on the UIL film page on how to interpret and how that uh, tie-breaking system works. It really behooves you to understand how that works because it it could be, a lot of people will ask, well, hey, uh, we, we got all superiors, but we didn't advance. Well, you could have been in a section with five superior films. And especially as you start moving up the ladder, the films get closer and closer in quality. You can't see, you, you know, it wouldn't be right to say your print film was poor in order to justify a lower ranking. It's still a superior film. It was just the number three your film. And at sometimes you just start really looking and picking and um, finding those fine details that make the difference between between one and another. That uh, makes the difference between a second, first and a second, or a second and a third, something along those lines. So once in round two, that we bring those up, those will move to the semifinal round. Semifinal rounds are usually, let's say, let's take narrative because that's the unusual one. There's a lot of entries in narrative. So typically we will have three sections of narrative. From those three, the panels will each judge, and it's like a tournament, you're in those brackets moving. Just imagine final four, okay? You're moving up those brackets and those semifinalists are there. Let's say there's three, three sections of them. Okay, sorry, I'm using my hands and blocking the screen. Uh, those three sections then will advance the top two into the final round. And <clears throat> we have six in the finals. If you're in some other categories, uh, let's say animation or uh, a, a documentary that usually has less, then typically it's going to be two sections of, of the films in that category, of which three will advance uh, to finals. Ultimately, you have six in You have your top six. Uh, they are ranked by, again, by panels. And you have a state champion, a first runner-up, a second runner-up, and then you'll have your fourth, fifth, and sixth place films um, that uh, are all part of, of the state awards ceremony. And uh, it's an exciting thing. It, it happens very quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we will we'll start off here at the end of January. And by the end of March, here we are with a month later, having gone through uh, four rounds and announcing our state champions and the like. So um, what are the categories? I mentioned narrative. I've actually mentioned, I think, all of them. Uh, we have narrative. That essentially is just your storytelling. Most of what we watch in film or television is narrative. Uh, I just finished watching the... It is telling me a story, whether it's biographical, whether, and the, if Argo says it's a true story, Okay, it, and I believe it. It's a, it's a true story. The next level that we then we have is pure fiction. We're watching The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings. We're we're watching uh, anything of that. In fact, probably ninety percent of what we watch is going to be a fictional narrative. Uh, our, you know, some people have even adapted classic pieces. They've adapted The Monkey's Paw. Uh, short stories have been adapted. Uh, for the narrative category. If you're doing a mockumentary uh, in the style of uh, Spinal Tap or, or Waiting for Gutman, uh, something along those lines, then those are not really documentaries. They're, 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 they're not based on, on fact. And daily. Those are actually pieces of fiction that fall into the narrative category. So I just mentioned, okay, and uh, there are many ways to approach a, a documentary. Uh, ultimately, people tend to think of the traditional uh, talking heads with, with illustrations and uh, film clips with a narrator speaking. Um, sometimes they can involve interviews. 
Uh, I've seen some gorgeous ones that were done with, through the use of animation. There's the piece about the tower shootings at, the U, in, at UT Austin in the 60s. That's a beautiful example of, of how they did this very creatively. Uh, along with documentaries, you can talk about an event. You can talk about a person. You can tell a story of something that happened. I always like to ask students, tell me stories about your hometown. They'll say, oh, nothing happens in my hometown. And before we know it, we find a story of some kind. Someone who lived there, a school, an event, something along, along those lines. Documentaries can also deal with themes. Themes such as caring, themes such as love, uh, themes as um, things of that, of that nature. Uh, uh, as long as it is bringing these facts together and documenting of something that is out there. The next category would be, uh, I'm going to talk about digital animation first. We've had a lot of questions and a lot of uh, discussion regarding the two types of animation that, that we have a, a contest in. Uh, initially, the contest started with just animation, and we realized that we needed to really separate these two into what we would call a digital animation, which is created within that computer using modeling, uh, where keyframes are used, and uh, the rest is filled in with, uh, by the computer itself, the rest of the movement, uh, things of that nature. Um, in contrast, in traditional animation, you have uh, claymation, where you actually sculpt with your, I think the key to all this is the hands, okay? You draw. So we go back to the Disney animators. They drew frame by frame by frame by frame. Pen on paper, and then all of that was photographed. The pen has evolved. The brush has evolved. The stylus, the drawing pad, the tablet. But the key is this, it's the hand is And philosophically, for me, as, as a director of this contest, I see this as a traditional form using the modern tools. You know, maybe at some time we would chisel a bunch of stone tablets. We would flip, we would draw little drawings on the corner of a book or a notebook and flip them and make flip cards that created the sense of motion. Still frames running together, using the persistence of vision to create a sense of motion. This is where we're coming from. Now, we've had some questions about this, and we will be posting uh, a, a position paper here in the near future on our website, uh, discussing this a bit further. But ultimately, I think it boils down to that, that um, um, that might be created by Pixar versus the animation in the King Kong created by Willis O'Brien, frame by frame, motion by motion, step by step, or Ray Harryhausen in this incredible Sinbad movies that were created in the 60s and 70s and even into the 80s, all using uh, models and uh, um, manipulation of the pieces. Uh, I've seen a lot of interesting use of Lego, uh, Lego blocks and, and things like that that fall into that category. That explains some of that difference there uh, between the two. Additionally, there's, there's another award that I think we, everybody needs to be aware of. Um, there is a group in Austin called the Nobility Project um, their goals involve uh, social justice, social change. Uh, you will be seeing a video that we will be posting online from them talking about their particular contest. During the second round of, of the contest, 
judges are asked to nominate films that they think meets the criteria of the nobility project. These are then set aside, and it may be that they didn't advance to semifinals. Uh, it could be that they, they end up advancing to finals. Doesn't matter. At that point, at round two, they are also entered into the nobility project. The, the, that particular organization judges the films, uh, ranks them, and at the state finals gives cash awards. And by cash awards, I mean money for the school to buy film equipment. Uh, it is restricted to that. Uh, it's not going to an individual, it's not going to the teacher, it's going to the school and must be dedicated to the film program. Um, it was, uh, it's an incredible project. Some of the films that are entered there uh, deal with some issues that deal with the way we can change our world, the way we can improve our world, and with the idea of social justice. <clears throat> uh, who are the judges? I've, I've talked about judges a lot. I've talked about three judges and nobility judge. Well, the nobility judges are people from the nobility project. Our judges are people who volunteer to judge. Uh, they are unpaid, okay? Uh, they have to put in a lot of hours to do this, and they submit uh, an application form. Uh, the application will include uh, who they are, where they studied, uh, and wh who the judges are essentially teach film in our high schools. They are professionals who care enough about what Uh, educational filmmaking in our schools. Uh, they come from uh, our colleges and universities. All of them have degrees in, hours in, or have taught uh, uh, in some form or, or capacity. Uh, we are not pulling them off the streets, okay? Uh, these people are vetted, they are there. And uh, uh, we also allow film students who are already into their junior year of under graduate uh, or in graduate school. Um, those are very rare and are primarily used in the early rounds with uh, um, in, in, in a panel situation. Um, the final festival uh, in Division One and Division Two, and let me explain that very quickly. Division One includes the schools that are in 1A, includes the schools that are in 5A and 6A. Uh, the state festival typically has been uh, in a live venue in, uh, in Austin. Uh, I think we, are, we know where we're heading already, but this year in uh, 2021, the festival will be a virtual festival. And uh, I can tell you that Paula Rodriguez, our director of theater at UIL, and I are working on making this an exceptional uh, online event with some guests, uh, some workshops, and of course the presentation of the films and the awards. I look forward to seeing your films uh, and look forward to you entering. I, I, uh, I, I pray for all of you at your schools and, and I look forward to continued education for our students and uh, wish you the best as you find, move us with those stories that make me laugh, make me cry, made me want to jump up and down, tell me a good story. Thank you.